Hey everyone, I'm here today to discuss you an interesting piece of automotive technology that should be implemented on four-cylinder cars, particularly those built within the United States of America. The technology I'm talking about is the cross-plane crankshaft. Now this has been around in V8 cars for decades, and four-cylinder motorcycles are actually starting to pick up on the trend, but yet four-cylinder cars have yet to implement them. You see, the reason why American V8s sound like a classic American V8 is due to the fact that they have a cross-plane crankshaft. The technology has several advantages and is the reason why basically certain V8 cars sound like V8s and others don't. You see, if you look at the front of a cross-plane crankshaft, it kind of looks like a cross. Every one of the crank pins is actually offset by 90 degrees. Thus, you have different types of firing orders than what you would find in a flat plane crankshaft where everything is basically offset about 180 degrees. It is due to these unique firing orders that you're able to make irregular firing intervals and you're able to make that burble or growl that people expect from an American V8. In the performance motorcycle world, it's called the Big Bang Firing Order, and it can be done with all different types of engines, not just V8s. But rather than me going on and try to explain what I'm talking about, I'd rather just show you a video made by the Yamaha Motor Corporation, which explains things pretty well. Four-cylinder engine offers a new dimension in linear throttle action. This is achieved through the cross-plane crankshaft and the 90 degrees phase positioning of its four crank pins. The rider operates the throttle, producing torque. This torque is essentially produced solely from engine combustion. However, total engine output, or composite torque, is actually a combination of this combustion torque plus the inertial torque produced by the rotation of the crankshaft. Inertial torque is unlike combustion torque. Inertial torque is resulting from the rotation of the crankshaft. Combustion torque can be operated by the rider through the throttle, but inertial torque grows larger in proportion to the speed of the crankshaft rotation and thus prevents linear throttle action from being achieved. As you can see, this is due to the crank moving the fastest at top and bottom dead center and the slowest at 90 degrees and 270 degrees. The result is this graph. The rider wants combustion torque, but because of the addition of inertial torque, which cannot be controlled, the result is something disordered, a composite torque unlike combustion torque. The solution to this is found in the cross-plane crankshaft. By differing the adjacent crank's rotations by 90 degrees, inertial torque fluctuation is eliminated. As you can see, inertial torque is almost completely eliminated, and the combustion torque sought by the rider is almost perfectly matched by the composite torque of the engine. In other words, the rider is able to achieve linear power delivery and traction through the operation of the throttle. With the exception of a few racing machines, no commercially available motorcycle has offered an inline four-cylinder engine with a cross-plane crankshaft. This new dimension in linear throttle action brought about through Yamaha technology is going to shift the entire paradigm of the super sports motorcycle world. Well, now that you saw that clip from Yamaha, you're probably pretty interested in what exactly a cross-plane four-cylinder exhaust sounds like. Well, I have plenty of clips for your enjoyment, so uh, keep in mind that all these engines are about one liter in displacement, not even close to the size of what a normal automobile engine would be, and thus, you know, just imagine what a, a two-liter uh, four-cylinder would sound like.
So after seeing all those video clips, do we really need any more of a reason why we should implement cross-plane crankshafts and four-cylinder engines? Well, just in case we do, I'll just give you a little bit of a background here. I mean, think about it. These cross-plane crankshafts are going to develop engines which, due to the counterweight design, is actually going to be a smoother, more luxurious running engine. And it's also going to have more of a linear, smooth acceleration. So theoretically, it might be a safer, more controllable car. Anyway, it's going to be a little bit more luxurious of a car, and perhaps we might be able to save a little bit of wear and tear in the drivetrain and you know, the transmissions and so on. But uh, here's the interesting thing. Let me talk business with you here. Have you seen the new corporate average fuel economy standards that the government's trying to propose? Pretty soon, practically every car on the road is going to have to get 40 miles to the gallon, and many cars are going to have to do better than that. So thus, you're going to see a lot more four-cylinder engines and four-cylinder eco-box style cars on the road. And Americans, I mean, we want that big classic V8 engine noise. We still want that. And the most cost-effective way of doing that, the easiest way of doing that, is just by changing the crankshaft in a four-cylinder engine and, of course, the few things that go alongside with that. But think about it. You don't have to replace the current generation of engine you have. You could change the bore and stroke, but you get to keep the same basic block and, you know, many of the tooling that you have in your factory. So we don't need to develop a new four, V4 or anything stupid like that. We already have the engines in place. Let's talk a little bit about the cars of the future. You see, the cars of the future, you're going to have to sell towards the young people of today. The young people of today, you could call them Generation Y, the Millennials, whatever you like to call them, they're not into buying cars like generations of the past. They really can't afford it. They have so much student debt. Gas prices are through the roof. Insurance prices are still going up. And we also have now a more congested highway, a more congested city. It's tougher for them to have a big luxurious car that, well, is, is safe and is something that they can manage. They're going to be driving the same cars in the future that they're driving now, even if they have a car and plan to have one. I'm talking about cars like Honda Civics and Toyota Corollas. That's basically what we're going to have to develop. Now, the thing is that you have to think of new ways to get these young people into the showroom. They really don't have the brand loyalty anymore. They see cars very utilitarianly. And, I mean, that doesn't prevent some young people from zooping up cars. Some young people can zoop up a car, you know, a little bit better than others. But at the end of the day, it turns into all about show and little about go. They're not going to race. They're not going to street race. They don't see a reason for it. But that doesn't mean they wouldn't like a car that has a pleasing exhaust note. And the interesting thing about trying to make a four-cylinder sound like a V8 or something like that is, you know, it's easier to do it with a crankshaft than with an exhaust system. If you were to try to make a four-cylinder sound better with an exhaust system, the car would essentially have to be designed around the exhaust. The exhaust would be heavy. The exhaust would be an expense, an expense that you can't easily, you know, legitimize to a person trying to buy a car. And in fact, the exhaust system could be somewhat offensive to someone. 
See, the best thing to do is to build a car that can be, you know, multifaceted, a car that can focus on different niches. You could have a very basic bare bones eco box that you could sell to grandma as a grocery getter. Give it a cross plane crankshaft, and even with the most restrictive exhaust system, it's still going to sound better than what it did before. And yet, you can give it a new trim line, put some flashy stuff on it for the young kids, and a little better exhaust, and it will sound a lot better. You see, a cross plane crankshaft is something that could actually probably please multiple generations. Now, another interesting thing I was thinking about, just as a side note, is that, you know, I've noticed that a lot of cars that have four-cylinder engines, they tend to actually sound better when you give them a quad-tipped exhaust system, though. You know, this is an interesting thing. Years ago, people just used to do like a wide pipe and give it a dual exhaust, and sometimes it sounds better. Sometimes it actually sound worse. But when I've seen cars with the quad-tip exhaust systems, and I've even seen some manufacturers starting to pick up on this trend, the exhaust system actually sounds a little bit better. I really don't know what it is. Another interesting thing I would like to see on exhaust systems, uh, perhaps is the old wedge-style tip that the old Brooklyn's race cars used to have. You know, they tend to create a nice burble as well. But anyway, me ending up this video, I'll just say this. I really believe that cross-plane crankshafts should be implemented on automobiles. The end.